Hi, this is Hal from Light and DPE, the digital photo experience, with a quick tutorial on expanded depth of field. More precisely, a couple shooting techniques, and then some things we can do inside of our image optimization software to give us an expanded depth of field. Here in California, it is late winter, just getting ready to be springtime. We've had a remarkably wet winter, and the wildflowers are starting to come out in an unbelievable numbers. Now I was out scouting around yesterday with the light staff when we were doing some shooting and we all had our macro lenses on and if you've ever shot macro you know that it does some incredible things allows you to get up very very close to your subject bring it in at life size or greater but because of the construction of that lens as well as the focal length and the focal distance that we're using we can have some issues with a depth of field that allows us to get the entire subject in focus. Now in macro photography it's of course beautiful to have a, a specific portion of the image in focus and everything else has a beautiful bouquet behind it and it is, is out of focus allowing our viewer to concentrate really on the subject at hand. But there are times when it would sure be nice to be able to capture reality. That is, when we look at a flower up close, or really look at anything up close, our eyes work and adjust very, very quickly so that we can see everything in focus, and we're not truly limited by our depth of field. Now, we do similar things when we shoot panorama or we shoot HDR. We, we try and overcome the limitations of our, our camera and software technology such that we can perceive and show our subject more like we do in reality. And that's what we're going to do here. Now, if we take a look real quick at this flower in the early morning dew, we'll see that I have a portion of this image that, that is crystal clear in focus. Right up here on, on the tip top, that leading edge of the flower itself, we get that nicely in focus. And then also over here on the left-hand side, we see a little bit of that lines up with our focal plane as well. But everything else is out of focus. I could have tried to take this image, and this one was shot here at f3.5, but if I had gone to f16, I could get a little bit more depth of field. What you'll find though with most macro is when you're this close, and I was shooting with a 180 millimeter lens, when, when you're this close at 180, even at f16, your depth of field might only expand out another millimeter or two, and you're really not going to get your entire subject. So the trick here is that we can take a series of shots, the first here, and then here's my second, third, and fourth, and with each shot, we're slowly stepping into our subject from leading edge to trailing edge and trying to have an image such that every slice of, in this case, the flower is in focus. If we have each of these slices, then we can put them together after the fact and combine it such that we have depth of field from the leading edge to the trailing edge of whatever that subject might be. So let's look again at those four shots. And for this, I was mounted up on a tripod. Uh, for me, that was an Enduro C213. I've got a really right stuff BH55 on top of it. And then I am mounted into my 180 macro on a Canon 7D. So I'm out here in the morning and set up for this expanded depth of field shot, grab one shot for the leading edge, and then in each subsequent, start to slowly move back through the flower until I get everything that I want to be in focus in focus. I've got a slice for everything. Our workflow from here, I'm going to demonstrate it from Lightroom, but you could just as easily do this from the bridge. Now I'll take the first image, shift click onto the last, and you want to grab all of your components. And then we're going to load these into Photoshop as layers. We're going to build a stack. To do that, just right click. For Mac users without a two button mouse, remember that's just a control click. And then as we get our flyout menu, edit in open as layers in Photoshop. As I were to click, as I click this here, open as layers in Photoshop, Lightroom is going to build me three virtual files and send them over to the Photoshop and put them all into the same document, leading to something like we see here. I have a stack, four layers, where each of the layers is one of the images that I had shot as a component. The trick now is with all these layers inside of Photoshop, we want to select them all. So I'll click onto the bottommost layer, shift click to the top, and now we have four active layers. From here, we're going to go over to the edit menu. And edit, drop down, and auto blend layers is really what we want. But if you automatically jump to auto blend layers, it's not going to work perfectly for you every single time. As we take different shots, there might have been some small movement in our subject, or just by the fact as we change our, our, our focus, the 
the subject is going to expand or contract just a little bit and, and not going to line up perfectly. So what we recommend here at Light when working expanded depth of field is to grab first auto align layers, allowing Photoshop to do some scene matching and arrange these layers such that they're all going to match up perfectly when we go to blend them. So I'll click to auto align layers and in normal cases, in almost every case for this, we can leave our projection at auto and hit OK. Photoshop's going to step through now and auto align all of these layers, slightly shifting and morphing them just a little bit so they all match up. Once it's done and it goes relatively quickly, we'll see that there is a, a little bit of shift. To do that, I, I'm going to zoom in just real quick here on the upper portion of the image itself, and you can see that there is some transparency up there that we have now. And that transparency is a result of taking each of the components and move them around just a little bit. So you will typically see some type of transparency after the fact that you can either crop out or we can take care of with the clone stamp or any of our retouching tools. Once our images, our components that is, have been aligned, now it's time to do the actual blending. For that, we'll go to Edit, Auto Blend Layers. When you click Auto Blend Layers, you have two options, either Panorama or Stack Images. For this process, we're going to click Stack Images and then make sure we have seamless tones and colors selected as well and hit OK. As you do this, Photoshop is begin, going to begin to blend all of our layers based on the content. What the program is looking for here is contrast. And if we think about it, each of the layers, where that layer is sharp, in focus, it has the highest contrast. So Photoshop is going through and looking at each layer for where it has the highest contrast, and then it's going to build layer masks for us to pick and choose where those places may be. As we take a look at our layer masks, you'll see that it is fairly interesting and fairly picky as to what exactly it shows. But if we look now, you'll see that you have a, a pretty impressive expanded depth of field shot with a macro at a 3.5 aperture. So pretty cool. This has allowed us to take multiple shots, put them all together, and we can go from the leading edge to the trailing edge of the flower having that all in focus. Now this is very similar to what we saw inside of Helicon Focus, and that software program still does a very nice job. But once we have Photoshop CS4, and I'm thinking CS5 is going to have this same thing, we already own Photoshop, really not a huge need to go over to Helicon to pick up this expanded depth of field option. The trick, remember to go Auto Align first, followed by Auto Blend. Now just to give you a quick before and after, I'm going to bring up a quick layer comp, and this one I'm just going to call Expanded Depth of Field, and hit OK. Now to show you the before, I'll click strictly onto the topmost layer and disable the layer mask. So here's what we had from one shot. One shot possible, 180 macro, 3.5 aperture. Notice just the leading edge of the seeds are in place. But when I click onto my expanded depth of field layer comp, we see the entire image, or at least the entire leading flower, pops into focus. To give you that before and after again, I'm just going to hit Control Z, Command Z for the Mac folks, and there is our before, single shot, after, four shots put together, where we put a majority of the image in focus. Not a bad little trick, something you might not use all the time, but it's a good thing to have in your bag just in case you want to work an expanded depth of field. As a Lightroom user, of course, you would just finish this process by potentially flattening your image here, cropping, and then going back to File, Save, which would take this image, save it as a TIFF, drop it back into Photoshop so that you could stack it with the components, keeping everything nice and organized. Once again, this is Hal from Light and DPE, the Digital Photo Experience. Have a great day. Any questions, comments, or concerns on this uh, tutorial, please send them out to Hal at Light Workshops. Good shooting. Have a great time. Hope to see you out here soon. If you want to shoot wildflowers with us, we got two great classes for it coming up here in the month of March. Take care.